Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Fako coming at you with another Legends of Runes here at Deck Guide. Today we're going to go over Soraka and Tom Kench, the deck I used to reach Diamond when 22 and 10. This is actually very solid. Today we're going to talk about the deck summary, deck strategy, Mulligan Guide, everything you need to know to take this deck yourself and become a Rune Terror Pro. So stick around, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new here for more in-depth Rune Terror content. Thank you very much. The deck strategy for Tom Kench and Soraka is actually kind of unique in that it has a few ways of winning. One win condition is simply playing Tom Kench and using the uh, devouring taste, an acquired taste, sorry, to like eat up all your opponent's units and then make them concede due to having like not much a late game, specifically relevant towards like more mid range decks and aggro decks. Tom Kench will carry you a very long way as long as you can protect him, heal him up, and play cards like Soraka to heal him. Alternatively, against some slower matchups, you're going to find Star Spring to be one of your consistent win conditions where unchecked Star Spring will heal your board up, you'll just kind of buy time and not overextend too much, use the Star Spring to slowly heal up and go from there. Brought back Protector also acts as a win condition too against aggro decks, specifically where you get a couple of onto the board. We have so much healing and sustain behind it. It can be quite obnoxious, especially alongside like Astral Protection uh, with with your brought back Protector. It's going to go a very long way. So definitely going up against aggro decks, you just want to be curving out, ignoring the Star Spring strategy mostly, unless you've got nothing else to do with your mana. Then you play Star Spring, try and heal up that board. If you can stay wide enough against the aggro decks, you should have a decent time. You also got some pretty handy tools like Hush and Shakedown to kind of utilize your units in a way to trade effectively, etc. The ultimate win condition is to basically play the control game. You've got the ultimate win condition in Star Spring. You've got the removal from Tom Kench and the, the ability to stay sustain a little bit just through kind of board control against mid range decks. So I would say that piloting this deck does require, you know, it's probably like on the medium level of difficulty. You've got to understand the healing mechanics. You've got to understand like, you know, uh, the interactions between the acquired taste and your opponent's uh, damaging because with our Tom Kench, as you play the acquired taste, it's actually going to make the units strike each other and then Tom Kench will swallow it up. Well, that unit will strike us, so they won't actually get damaged from the strike. But yeah, you definitely need to be wary of what your opponent can play against Tom Kench to stop that from being a thing. And that's where like having cards like Astral Protection and Guiding Touch as well as like being able to like kind of open attack with Soraka, which we haven't really talked about yet. But Soraka isn't like the true win condition. She doesn't really provide um, that kind of win con in this deck, but she kind of has that healing package and just makes a lot of sense to have her in a deck like this. She's pretty much just the huge synergy factor of this deck and you're able to cycle with her uh, once she flips. And then outside of that, it really plays out the same. Like you basically want to get your units into the field. You want to be healing them up and then just controlling the board with Tom Kench. So in most of your matchups, uh, looking for Tom Kench is going to be key. Um, against slower matchups, you will definitely like mulligan away a lot of cards looking for Tom Kench. Alternatively, against aggro decks, you won't specifically look for Tom Kench, but you look for the curve and hopefully Tom Kench is there along the way. So this is my current list of 40 cards. You'll find 90% of the cards will be relatively the same throughout every time Kench Soraka deck. There'll be a couple of different tech cards. So to keep it, keep an eye out for what your opponent may be taking. Some will be using like Mountain Goat. Some may be using Shakedown like I am. Some might be more heavily towards the Bastion, some less, but... 90% uh, of the cards are the same. You'll expect to see three copies of Tom Kench every time, uh, three brought-back protectors. Um, a variance between Astral Protection can sometimes be two to three. I like three. I think it's a fantastic tool for this deck. And too many times do I go, man, I wish I had Astral Protection in my hand. This is the reason why I'm running three. I'm also running two Bastions because uh, playing around some of the Shadow Isles, heavier removal is very relevant. So I do like that there. More ways of protecting uh, Tom Kench. Um, as if he does get left like removed from the field, everyone he's devoured will uh, come back and spat, onto, spat out onto the field on our opponent's side of the board. Three copies of Soraka, uh, three copies of Mentor of the Stones, three copies of Star Spring, three Pale Cascades, more combat tricks for protecting our units. I'm at, at the moment, I'm running three Hush. It's probably another like uh, factor where the card number can change. I'm on three. I think a lot of decks are just on two. I'm going a bit more greedy towards like having that guaranteed hush when I need it kind of thing. And it's not, it's not even a bad card to like say that we should only run two of it. I think it does find like a lot of good uses. There's always a good use for hush. Plus, quick dip, your opponent's about to remove your Tom Kench with some removal. <laughs> you can hush your Tom Kench so 
the units that get spat out because when you silence it, <laughs> it ignores who it's devoured. So that's fantastic play. Uh, Guiding Touch times three, very much a staple for this deck. Uh, Fortune Croker, Box to Puss, Krusty. You're, all, you're gonna see three of these in every uh, Tom Kinshasaraka deck. And I've got, I've got two Shakedowns. I like Shakedown as a burst speed spell that I can do before my opponent gets an action. Very relevant. Some decks are running Hired Gun. I like Shakedown, specifically um, against anything that's not aggro, Shakedown finds a tremendous amount of value. And it's really good against discard aggro because they want to like have a certain wide board so they can play crowd favorite. And you can sometimes have like, for example, Soraka on the field is a fantastic target uh, for the Shakedown, even like a Broadback Protector or Tom Kench, just beefy units that you can shake down at burst speed to clear off clear off your opponent's uh, little pesky uh, jury rigs, etc. poros. All right, and to the breakdown, the Mulligan, I may have went over it briefly within the deck strategy, but Tom Kench is one of your ultimate win conditions. It's one of the cards that we want to always be looking for. So unless you're versing an aggro deck, you should always keep this in your opening hand. It's definitely gonna go a long way. There's no reason to kick it. Even against aggro decks, sometimes if you do find it and you have a couple of de decent cheap minions, you should definitely keep Tom Kench as well. He's gonna inevitably in the long run help you to sustain. You just have to be careful about taking too much damage from aggro. Don't hesitate to trade off your units unless you see some really good plays where you can like come back in a swing turn, heal up your entire board and get, save more damage in the long run. So just kind of check what your hand looks like in terms of trading effectively into aggro decks. But as I said, Tom Kench is generally gonna be 9% of the time kept unless you have a very poor hand against aggro decks. Speaking of which, if you're cur if you're curving out against aggro decks, keep the broadback protector. Um, generally, in a lot of matchups, broadback protector goes a long way, but it's not something you're going to keep very often unless you have a hand that really complements it. What I mean by that is simply having a curve, maybe into Soraka, into broadback protector against aggro. Uh, most of the time, as I said, unless Tom Kench is in your opening hand against slower decks, then you need to mulligan away, uh, hunting for that very desperately. You'll never have much of a reason to keep Bastion in your opening hand, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, Astral Protection, I haven't seen uh, any scenario where that's kept in my opening hand, usually because we're looking for Tom Kench, so you're not oftentimes going to see this in your opening hand as a keep, and for that, I'd say don't worry about keeping it. Uh, Soraka is a fantastic keep most of the time, especially with a curve. Um, if your hand is a bit heavy, this is actually a card that you can consider kicking back into your deck. But yeah, most of the time, you're simply going to look for those like Fortune Croakers, Krusties, and a Boxtopus. Uh, Guiding Touch is an acceptable keep as well, uh, especially if you're sitting on a hand that has Boxtopus. It can be quite fantastic sometimes to, like, if you've missed a turn one, you play Boxtopus turn two, and um, you can go into Guiding Touch relatively after that to protect him. Um, outside of that, I think your General Mulligan is the same. You look for the one drops, you look for the two drops, uh, etc. You kick everything else. Um, you won't keep many combat tricks. I don't personally keep Hush in the opening hand either. Specifically because we're running three of them, there should be no reason to be keeping Hush. Generally, your hand's not gonna look that great. So unless it's a perfect curve, there's no reason for Hush. You can always kick this. Alongside Pale Cascade too, I haven't seen it in many uses where I need this in the opening hand. Star Spring's usually a fantastic keep uh, all around, unless your hand is very poo-poo against aggro deck, then get rid of it. You'll see me bring up aggro decks a lot when I talk about these mulligan guides because they're specifically the most trickiest to mulligan towards, simply because you need to have that very perfect hand to deal with the early game. And that's the most important thing about this deck. It's early game interactions kind of low, so you really need to curve out against them. Outside of that, if you're versing a slower deck, you're fine just to keep cards like Soraka, you're fine to keep cards like Tom Kench and Star Spring, and that will go a long way, long, long way. Fortune Croak is also gonna be a fantastic card to keep all around against slower decks specifically. All right, guys, so I've got some very important tips to share with you guys. Firstly, in the mirror matchup, which is gonna happen, you're gonna play Tom Kench, Soraka mirror matchups. The person who's playing the acquired taste first is going to be at the advantage. So even if you if you play Tom Kench first, and then your opponent plays Tom Kench on their off turn, so you have the attack token and you play Tom Kench, and then your opponent plays Tom Kench, going back into their turn, they're going to get to respond with the acquired taste first. It's very important that if you're playing a mirror matchup on turn four, if you have Tom Kench in hand and you're the first person to play, you actually have to pass you have to pass against your opponent and if they end the turn it's fine um unless like i can't see a i can't see a spot where 
in the mirror matchup coming turn four, your board state's that terrible. I'm assuming that you have Tom Kench on curve, right? So you pretty much have to pass. It's one of the ways you can look for your opponent to make a, uh, make a mistake because if they develop Tom Kench, you don't develop Tom Kench. You can play something else at that point, but pretty much on your next turn, you will play Tom Kench. So coming back into your turn, you'll have the ability to play the inquired taste against your opponent's Tom Kench. It's very important that you guys understand passing. And I might do a video on the techniques of passing if anybody's interested in seeing that. Please, uh, you know, mention that in the comments. That's something I'm kind of interested in doing. I've had a few games where it shows really good examples of it. Just let me know. That's one of the most important things that you guys need to understand, though. Unless you have the ability to interact with the opponent's Tom Kench as they play it next turn, be careful uh, playing your one. The next thing I want to mention is, too, um, in a lot of matchups from experience, there's going to be a lot of turns where I don't play the acquired taste because it's not going to be efficient for that turn. Don't hesitate to just not play the acquired taste. The acquired taste is always there to threaten your opponent. So a lot of the time, if you're the slower deck, like you're not the aggressor, you'll wait for your opponent to make the play. So you, you might oftentimes find yourself passing against like, let's say a mid range or an aggro deck, unless your board state, like unless you're, unless you're on an empty board, if you have control of the board or you've curved out pretty decently, um, it's important that you learn how to start passing so you can punish your opponent's mistakes, especially relevant at lower ranks. Um, as you get higher and higher, it might be less effective, but in general, it's still a very important thing to master. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any further questions, jump down to the comments. I'll be responding as efficiently and fast as I can. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are new here, seriously, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, we are making in-depth Runeterra content for you guys so you can become a Runeterra pro and I'll meet you in Masters.